Berlin is occupied by the Red Army. To the strains of martial music, the Red Army stages a review in Berlin. In this headquarters on the 8th of May, the final unconditional surrender has been ratified. German Field Marshal Keitel, former Chief of Staff. Marshal Zhukov of the Red Army. Ex-Field Marshal Keitel signs unconditional surrender for those remnants of the Wehrmacht still bearing arms. General Admiral von Friedeberg signs. American General Spots of the 8th Air Force. British Air Marshal Tedder. French General Delat de Tassini. It is over. The war in Europe is ended. In Berlin, the Brandenburg Tor still stands. Amid the ruins, the day's people wander here and there. Battered and shell-swept, the famous Adlon. Not much else remains. In southern Germany, Allied troops move forward to complete the occupation of the country. Eagle's Nest at Batchesgarden, formerly Hitler's mountain retreat. Much of Munich lies in ruins. The famous beer hall. Little remains. One of the first war criminals is captured, Hermann Goering. He is interviewed by Allied newspaper men. Field Marshal Kesselring, former commander of the German troops in Italy. Field Marshal von Rundstedt, former commander in the West. Frank, former Governor General of Poland, high on the list of war criminals. Field Marshal von Kleist. Admiral Hothi, former Regent of Hungary. The tall man is Arthur Size Inquart, traitor of Austria, former Gauleiter of Holland. He will be brought to trial. In Austria, the last German armies in the Southern Redoubt had already been surrendered. Lieutenant General Brandenburger of the 19th German Army came down over the Brenner 
with his chiefs of staff to sign the capitulation in the small Austrian city of Innsbruck. American General E.H. Brooks has ratified another victory. But meantime, near the small town of Flensburg on the Danish border, Grand Admiral Dönitz, self-styled new Fuhrer of Germany, winds up the last business of state. The surrender of his once great U-boat fleet. One by one, they enter British ports and are taken over by men of the Royal Navy. These Germans, once the terror of Allied shipping, are now, like all their comrades in arms, nothing but prisoners of war. The news of Germany's surrender reaches the people of Brussels five years almost to the day after the German invasion of that country. From dawn on V-Day, every house in the city is bright with flags, every street alive and loud with happiness. Orange smoke flares, no longer needed for warfare, make effective fireworks. In Paris, from Notre Dame. From Sacre-Cœur, from every church goes out the resounding message of peace and hope for the future and present joyful thanksgiving. Place de l'Opera. In the Rue de Madeleine. While General de Gaulle approaches the Arc de Triomphe to pay homage in the name of the people of France at the grave of the unknown soldier, to pledge that victory, with the memory of those who died to gain it, shall this time, and for all time, be preserved in peace. The capitulation at Lerneburg to Field Marshal Montgomery of the remnants of the Northern German Army and Navy was not only the signal of Germany's total defeat, it was the signal for the liberation of those countries still remaining under German occupation. The British fleet sailed into Copenhagen Harbor. Denmark is free after five years. Five years of stubborn resistance and heroic acts of sabotage. The German cruiser Prince Eugen fell prize to the British Navy. To the Danish capital, where a guard of honor awaits him, comes Field Marshal Montgomery, victor and liberator. And his reception by the people of the city demonstrates their feeling of deliverance and gratitude. As in every liberated city, the people of Copenhagen welcome the Allied troops. The world has seen such scenes of joy in France, in Belgium and Holland. And now it is the turn of the people of Denmark. Sheets of music are printed and distributed. Soldier salute soldier. This is the comradeship of free peoples. King Christian arrives for the reopening of the Danish parliament. With a democratic constitution, all parties are represented under the leadership of this well-loved monarch. All through the occupation, he inspired his people. 
His faith in allied victory never faltered. His faith is justified today.